Hi, thanks for joining me with uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero number two. Uh, this is how we made the armor for these suits. Uh, video number one shows the rest of the stuff. <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do is get yourself some thin sheet of metal. It's available at Home Depot in the venting section. And then we built up the edges with craft foam, which actually is not the best way to go, but uh, it is how we first tried it and it worked out good enough. Um, the foam can cave in under the Bondo once it's all said and done, so that's why it's not as good of a medium to use. Um, here you can see where he built up the foam to the basic shape of the armor. Uh, it's higher on one side because that's how we wanted it uh, on the insides. This is the scorpion armor, the shoulder armor. The shape is a little bit different. And Next you'll see a template that I used to make each shape. You just flip it over and uh, you have the shape for you know each left and right side from one template. We built this one up on the edges with balsa wood uh, or this might have even been trim, just some trim that I found. Uh, glue it in place and it becomes uh, a nice stable um, base for the bondo to be um, to bondo to cover it. Uh, it also doesn't crumble like the craft foam does. Um, so here you can see where it's basically being slowly built up, uh, epoxied in place, and um, this is what makes the uh, Scorpion armor have that thickness and that, that uh, stronger feel. It does make it kind of heavy having all that Bondo on there. These pieces of metal were used in the back to reinforce the spikes because the spikes would bend very easily with the regular metal. Those pieces were very rigid. Um, I put screws into the, metal, uh, into the wood to strengthen it even more um, so that that wouldn't break away uh, so that the, if the epoxy kind of didn't want to hold the screws would help hold it in place um, and they do get abused quite a bit people don't realize that these are handmade and they come up and they grab your shoulders or they kind of patch on the back they can, they're pretty rough with it sometimes um, next is uh, Brian who is Sub-Zero he's putting Bondo on his shoulder armor there now this was our first attempt at this and we didn't realize uh, quite how to work with Bondo so um, you kind of just get used to it, you get a feel for it, fill in all the cracks, try not to bulk it up so much like you're about to see um, because sanding it down is a real pain. Not to mention when you leave it bubbly like this it leaves a lot of holes because you sand it down but you don't get all the way down uh, to the lowest points and you have to go back and fill it later with either more Bondo or Plaster of Paris or Wood Putty or you know, whatever you choose. Here you can see we've started sanding it away to make it uh, smoother uh, to get ready for painting. Um, once again the, the construction paper is taped to the inside of the armor to keep, uh, to keep that area nice and clean because later on we will be spraying uh, spray glue on craft foam and attaching it there so we want a nice clean base. This is the knee armor and we reinforced it with some uh, little pieces of uh, I think they're steel. Um, we just bent them to the same curve, glued them in place. Uh, you should always use a respirator or a mask when using all these fumes. I have a well ventilated area. Um, we had a fan in the window. If you don't, things like this can happen. You become insane and um, do crazy things. So yeah, that's there's, there's, cute. Anyway, um, here's more. Here's where I used Plaster of Paris to kind of start filling the gaps that the Bondo left because um, we, like I said, we're kind of new at working with it. Here you can see a lot of the gaps after it's been sanded down most of the way. So I had to go back and fill those in with, you know, some other medium uh, to get it to look nice and smooth. Um, but they're looking pretty good. You can see the shape is really taking place there. Uh, after hours of sanding, I sat outside for quite a while sanding one morning. Here we've primered them uh, with primer and uh, as with most projects you like to primer it and then wet sand it for a nice smooth finish uh, and then primer it again and wet sand it again. Uh, it becomes very very smooth which makes the top coat uh, usually shinier or just nicer looking. Uh, Sub-Zero actually used rub and buff instead of paint on his armor. Uh, rub and buff is a kind of shiny wax that the more you rub it the shinier it gets. Here's what I was talking about earlier. You take the two millimeter craft foam, cut it to the right size, and glue it right onto the uh, armor. Here he's laying on some texture by adding three more pieces of two millimeter craft foam. Um, and he added some spikes from a bead store that we found um, 
to kind of give it a nice rough look. So here's a kind of a finished product on that armor. On the other underside is Velcro, and that's how it attaches to the um, the cloth area. This is the back to the scorpion armor. Um, once again, you primer it up real good, and, uh, and then I painted it gold. And then you peel away the tape in the middle, and you've got a nice shiny clean surface to attach your um, your foam. So you in the next picture you'll see one pic uh, one with foam on it, and one with foam and the pyramids glued in place. Uh, very nice, clean looking, um, good enough for you know what we were using it for anyway. Uh, drying up on paint cans so the light under my oven was nice and warm so it was a good place to dry stuff we live in Alaska so it's usually pretty chilly this time of year uh, this is a template for the knee armor and um, the next picture you can see the knee armor with the foam again um, just basically the same thing as before um, you add the bondo to it you sand it down and um, you know hours later you have a finished product so uh, in the next picture you'll see where Scorpion's knees are painted gold and uh, that was actually version one of the Scorpion mask which we scrapped and then the belt for Scorpion as well which I sewed together. Uh, the next picture you see the foam piece about like ready to be put on there and um, basically just cut it to size and we got the adhesive kind but we also used some spray glue sprayed the back of the foam and then attached it to the uh, the knee armor. We found some skulls at Value Village that were made of styrofoam. We thought these would be great for the inside of the scorpion knee armor, so we cut the heads off, made them flat, and uh, then we attached some epoxy to it, um, just like so. And we actually curved them just a little bit because the knee armor is curved as well. You can see that kind of concave shape and uh, attached them to the armor like such then we got some uh, I don't know some elastic with velcro attached to it and just uh, strapped it around it to make it dry so a very nice look um, really adds a, a nice touch to the the knee armors of scorpion uh, you can see the finished product here um, and if anything gets chipped you just go in with a marker or something and kinda touch it up if you have to uh, once the knee armor was done, we took the shin armor and attached it with a piece of leather and epoxy. And the leather keeps the knee and the shin together. That way you don't have to attach the knee to um, your knee and worry about it like popping or rubbing against the, the shin or moving it out of place because they're attached together. And then you just strap the, strap the yellow part here right to the leg with some uh, elastic with velcro attached to it so you'll see that in the final picture here's a final shot of the armor for scorpion and uh, next you'll see a final shot of the armor for sub-zero or for one of them anyway um, we originally went without the spikes but we decided that we wanted to add those so we took some time later and did that here's the final project uh, you can see down below where we've just attached the knee armor to the leg and then the knee armor itself actually has an elastic band that goes on the knee as well so there's actually three three pieces holding it to the leg um, and uh, this is downtown Anchorage and this is in my living or in my kitchen good for all the kitties uh, this is up um, at what we call flat top um, it's actually not up the mountain but up up the mountains a ways uh, over Anchorage a little Adobe Photoshop there and then of course there's always the fun stuff you're doing, you know, represent the M for Mortal Kombat and uh, me and my Corona hat. And then there's, you know, good old trucker scorpion. Looking beautiful. And then there's a uh, redneck scorpion, or I don't know what you'd call him. But uh, then of course the best is always, you know, uh, Arnold Scorpion Egger. Oh, I am ever impressive. Ha <laughs> ha. So anyway, thank you for watching this. Hope this gives people ideas on, you know, how they can make their own armor and uh, you know, good luck.